Yeah, so uh, a lot of times I say the hats have many detents on them, right? Because you're moving them all the time. But uh, uh, in motorsports, there's, there's a lot of challenges. Um, it, it's not like selling a t-shirt where if you get the size right and the customer is happy, it's, uh, it's a performance-driven product. And uh, the customer support has to be there and you have to have a knowledgeable uh, employee base to be able to support that and be ready at a moment's notice. There's, you know, we have our cell phones on all our business cards for a reason. What's interesting is the team that we've assembled, we kind of play off of each other. And that's what's really given me the, the greatest sense of accomplishment uh, in my career thus far is what I dreamed when I was little and being able to be associated with this industry and, and work in the industry is um, we've been able to assemble this group that's, that's now given me something that, that I always wanted to be part of. I was the owner of Chenet Chassis uh, for about 28 years. My wife and I the whole time and uh, I merged with Eagle in 2012 I believe it was and so now I'm here in Lincoln Nebraska and we got uh, both our companies in the same building and still building sprint cars. My very first car I ever built was for a friend of mine uh, Bill Rook. I raced with him in 85 and 86. Got to know Bill really well. He was the guy to beat and uh, by this time I wanted to start building cars so I started building this car in my shop and I had like one side of a car done and I went over to Bill's shop and I said, hey, I'm building this car. You guys want to come over and look at it, you know, and see if you guys want to buy it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you know. So they come over about an hour later. It was some evening during the week. And they walked in the shop and I had the one side of the car sitting up on a jig. And Bill kind of checked it out, looked at it. And he says, yeah, this, this is really nice. He says, uh, you know, we'll take it. So I was really super excited. So I get this car all done. This was the winter of 86 and 87. So for the start of the 87 season, Bill started out and he won, um, I think like six out of 10 races right off the bat. And then uh, Father's Day came along out of Houston's and uh, unfortunately he crashed in the feature and was killed. And uh, bad deal, I mean, it was just a violent crash. And you know, the car, the car actually it ripped the roll cage off the car. It wasn't because of the welding or anything, but it was just a circumstance. And, um, that was my very first car I built and had a friend die in it that night on Father's Day about probably two months into the season. So, you know, when you go back and you talk about passion, like I said, I don't know how you measure it, I don't know how you get it, but I must have had a ton of it because where I think most people would have walked away from that and just done something else and I think I went back to the shop and I just kept working and working and working. Yeah, like when Doug got my cars and basically set the world on fire, as they say, uh, my phone was like smoking. I mean, it was just taking orders, you know, it was just incredibly busy. And that's how I basically started. I mean, this all came to me. I never had to make any phone calls. So that's kind of how my building career started. Uh, right around 2010, 2011, I kind of heard rumblings that Eagle was moving to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and Mike Long was running everything, and I uh, knew Mike well enough where I could call him on the phone and just talk to him. So yeah, after I heard they're moving to Lincoln, I called Mike and just asked him if he'd be interested in hiring me or maybe merging, and, and he was really excited, I and mean, I couldn't believe it. He was totally excited, and, and from that point on, I think it took about a year and a half, two years of phone calls. and you know, deciding what I really want to do and, and when the time came, um, yeah, we decided to move to Lincoln and uh, it was just great for us because now I'm still doing what I love to do and, and uh, my wife has a really nice uh, house cleaning business on her own and she's happy and so, yeah, it, it turned out great. When I first saw it uh, come together, uh, when Eagle Chassis uh, brought Brian Schnee uh, in and the Schnee brand and also brought Stollard in, uh, what they did was they, they took a, uh, an established chassis company with an established name and they brought in uh, 
probably the finest sprint car builder in the, in the nation. And the brand was very well established in Snay chassis. They also did the same thing with the micro sprints with the Stollard chassis. EMI acquired the Stallard brand from Mark Stallard, um, but we developed the Stallard Series 2, that's the acronym SST for those that don't know. When I came into the picture, I just told Mike, hey, nothing bad to say about what we've acquired or what we have now, but it's just kind of dated, you know, and I think people would like to see something new, something fresh, something different, something that we can call our own and still represent that brand. And so I had suggested that we put focus towards designing something new and building a new car. You know, immediately he took right to my idea. He said, you know what, Frank, that's fair, but we're gonna need your help, obviously, figuring out what the hell we're building. So um, I worked really close with Rick Hinch. Um, we did a lot of drawing on the computers. We did a lot of thinking. Um, I just kind of gave him a lot of ideas and he helped me kind of make my idea tangible, you know what I mean? He's really the one that helped turn everything into a reality. With EMI uh, coming on board here to not only maintain and promote the Henchcraft brand, uh, coming on as a design engineer and working with our uh, sprint car builders and also our micro sprint division, our quarter midget division, it has uh, afforded me the opportunity to really engage my creativity and, and use some of my experience. What I'm all about is, is making the car perform better. You know, you think when you build a new model car, you think, well, geez, this is it. Where can I, where can I go from here? This is the best of the best. Well, that's only the best right now. You know, when you take that best and you take it out there and work with it, um, if you're motivated and passionate about it and want to work hard, you're going to find things that definitely need improved. Well, everyone has uh, maybe their expertise or their experience or niche that uh, really enables us to complement each other. Uh, worked at Richard Petty's uh, for about two years and then I moved over to Roger Penske. Um, I have an Indy 500 championship ring, I have a nationwide uh, championship, and then I had a cup championship. The quality that, that we're producing out of this shop is even if not above NASCAR quality that I had saw in North Carolina. The guys here are awesome welders. Amazing, amazing quality that they're producing. The biggest difference is NASCAR racing basically has unlimited budget. Say, a grinding disc. You know, I tend to stretch it a little further because I know that 3M isn't a sponsor of EMI racing. You know, where they're giving us box loads and truck loads of free stuff just so that we put our sticker on the side of the car or whatever. But as far as what we're doing, everything is the exact same. Um, we're laser cutting parts. I mean, it's really the same, same concepts that are being used at NASCAR level that are being used on customers' products here. for youth to become part of motorsports is really important to us. Not just our livelihood, but just to, to carry on that legacy, you know, that everyone before us kind of built. We sit here in a, a mecca of motorsports that a lot of people ahead of us have put a lot of time and effort and energy into to build it to what it is today. And, and they have put a responsibility on our generation to ensure that we sustain it. And then we also have to be ready to pass that on to the next. And, 
and uh, that's why it's so important that we work with the youth and and uh, really try and cultivate um, that next generation of motorsports. Like for me, being involved in the quarter midget racing and watching the little kids go out there and race and live out their dream is just so awesome to see. What's really cool about working with people that with this much talent is we all share a passion for what we do and being in racing, you, racing is competitive. So we all have that competitive side. So we're always trying to one up each other on the welds, but at the same time, we learn from each other and keep getting better as a group. And that's probably the most awesome thing that I've been involved with as far as a job. You know, and internally here at EMI, you know, it's try, trying to be the best. You know, me and, me and Brian, you know, we'll try, always try to one-up each other. And, you know, in that process, we teach each other stuff at the same time. So it really, you know, it, I, I think it drives the skill really, really high here. That's, that's what true teamwork does. You know, everyone's getting together. Everyone's checking over everyone's um, work, you know, making sure it's up to par. It's, it's passing qualifications. I always wanted to be a, a builder. I've always been mechanically inclined, uh, engineering mind. I've always just wanted to be a, a chassis builder. I wanted to build something, you know, whether it was different, not necessarily, but better. I want to be around race cars for the rest of my life and to be with the core group of guys that are there. They're all on the same mindset that, hey, we're here, we're going to build the best thing that we have and uh, people are going to like it, I mean, and they do. There's a lot of people that are really, really thriving on, on our brand. The brand is growing. I feel like we're as strong as we ever are, and we're just going to keep getting stronger. There's sometimes my wife catch me sleeping. She can see my hands and feet moving like I'm driving a car while I'm in a bed. You know, it's just, that's kind of wild. She's like, wow, then you can tell that you're really into what you do because you go to sleep doing the same thing, and it's just like, I've never seen, I was wanting her to record me doing that sometimes just so I can see what's going on there, but it's, it's always been in my blood. I, I get to come into work every day and I help people, and that's something that I've always loved to do. Not only am I helping others, but I'm helping others with something that I'm so deeply passionate about that, you know, it's exciting to come to work. Uh, you kind of got to pinch yourself some days because some of the folks that you idolized when you were young and some of the techniques that you never thought you'd learn. And now you're injected right in the middle of it. And uh, anytime you kind of have a down day, you gotta remind yourself of that, you know, that, that you're here and you made it. And uh, it can only get better. 